Welcome back to the Hot Desk. Now, there was a big development for Washford Port this week with the announcement that a Dutch shipping line is to offer a new route from the port beginning next month. And to explain the implications and to have a chat about Waterford Port more generally, I'm delighted to have in studio with me now the Port's Terminal Operations Manager, Derek Madigan, and Chief Executive, Frank Ronan. Thanks so much for coming in, gentlemen. Thank you. Tell me, I'll start with yourself, Derek, first of all, to explain what this new development is. Yes, yeah, quite an exciting uh, development, Julie. Uh, it means we've now got a what's called a feeder deep sea service operating out of Waterford. We've never had anything like that before out of the Waterford port. We were strictly a short sea container service port. So it's a, it's a new departure. It's been asked for by a lot of the importers and exporters in the region for a number of years. It's took a long time to bring to fruition, but uh, happily now it looks as if it'll be starting sometime in July. So this is a big deal. So this means that you can now, or a company based in Ireland, can reach further flung destinations, essentially. Yes, yes. whereas directly. before they would have had to operate through Dublin or Port of Cork to get their boxes to the the, the non-European destinations, I would call them, uh, the likes of Africa, Far East, America, South America. So now these boxes can actually be delivered into Port of Waterford, put on a vessel there and on a BG vessel, sent across to Rotterdam and then put on the mother vessel to go to whatever part of the globe they need to go to. Okay, so you're saying this is something that had been sought for a long time. Does it take a long time to try and generate these the, these link-ups? Yes, it took a long, long time, particularly the way the world economy was when back in 2013 when we started this event, trying to put this in place. Uh, shipping lines and shipping companies are very conservative. They don't like to change and trying to convince them that there was uh, enough containers and volume in the Waterford region, southeast region, to do this was uh, quite a task and took quite a long time, a lot of convincing as well. And when you s- say it, it took a lot of convincing for them, who are your main customers? Who well, They're primarily all the agri, yeah. agri sector uh, exporters, so I, they're easily known. The Clan B is uh, Dawn Meats, Dawn Pork and Bacon, uh, Nutrition, in Wexford, people like that. Uh, are the prime prime sources of uh, the the volumes that are going to st- start the service? We hope to grow it then uh, as we go on, as people become confident with it. So there's a lot of pharmaceutical companies we would like to bring on board as uh, as we go ahead. Great. So this is potentially the start of something big for the port, Frank. And of course, it's an important time for the port too, isn't it? I, I know you're beginning to develop your master plan as well for the next twenty five years. Yeah, and the master plan tries to try to stick at the crystal ball out from under, out of the press and see where we're going to be in twenty five years time, and that's that's always a challenge. Uh, but for 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 a master plan to have any meaning at all, we, we, it's all about service in a business, service in a market. Uh, on the on the port of Waterford, I suppose there's a couple of legs on the stool, and to see that kind of that, that extra leg of the of the low low kicking in uh, with the with the BG service and with Maersk uh, gives a great foundation. Uh, for the master plan, a great confidence, I suppose, to see where we're going next. So, yeah, it's a good start. Uh, I think there's more we can do on that on that front. Uh, the master plan will will try and gauge the sort of infrastructure we're going to need. Uh, infrastructure in ports takes a long time to develop. Mm. Uh, consenting is difficult. Uh, big the money is difficult. I mean, it's, it, there's big investments required. So, so to get all that lined up. Uh, we need to. We need. A, we need a master plan. We need a vision. We need a view of where we're going. It's a bit a la carte, Julie. Uh, we won't go building anything until we actually we find we need it. Uh, so it's about preparing, about getting ready, about having a list of options uh, that we can, I suppose, take off the shelf and put in place if and when we need them. So it's very much about if first, mm. uh, and then and then get them lined up. And what about Brexit? Is that something that you would see a benefit for? Or benefit from, and particularly maybe now that you have this link to Rotterdam, could that be a way indirectly you could? I'm not get sure. More, I'm yeah. not sure. Funny, but the Rotterdam thing is actually it's it's it's, it's more about uh, the climate change debate than it is about Brexit. You know that development for us, and it's great to see the cabinet signing off this morning on on on, on its climate change, you know, plan. Uh, because what the what the what the BG service that we're announcing today does first and foremost is it takes trucks off the road, or it takes certainly takes those journeys off the road and allows people in this area to go straight to ships with much less road miles. So that's a really good climate story. The The traffic we're looking at here would never have gone through the UK, so it's not impacted by, mm-hmm. by that whole, 
you've heard about the land bridge and the customs mm-hmm. and the queues in Dover. None of that stuff is relevant for this particular service. This service would have always gone directly from Dublin to Rotterdam or directly from Cork to Rotterdam or some of the big European hubs. So there's no really cha- real change in that and there's no impact on the The UK doesn't have an impact. But don't underestimate the concerns we all have about Brexit. Uh, the Brexit, uh, if, if it goes all horribly wrong when she keeps it keeps threatening to do uh, the impact is 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 just economy wide and very heavy on the on the on the food sector and the agri sector so, so that remains a concern is, yeah. uh, quite apart from the logistics issue there's a real deep economic concern there yeah um and and speaking of economic impacts of course wash report has a huge impact on the region there in Waterford and the southeast region more widely we saw that in an economic impact study that came out uh, on the port last year. Yeah, it, it's it's a kind of a it's a it's a it's a good conversation over a coffee. It, it's what we're really about. I think the the impact of the port that econ- that wider economic impact that's really what we're about. So it's mm. I mean I know we just close our accounts and what we do doing here and there, but that's very narrow. Our reason to be in life is actually is to facilitate trade in the region. Uh, so, so we're very southeast orientated, and it is about moving moving traffic through and facilitate making things happen in the economy and make it happen more efficiently and more effectively. Uh, so the fact that we can actually encourage jobs growth, encourage uh, business growth, uh, take cost out of supply chains, uh, allow things to happen in our area with a greater ease is is really what we're about. And to do that, we have to run a business, make a profit, invest, have master plans, all that stuff. But it's really. That's all. Come this. It's all to one side. It's really about uh, it's facilitating the economy. Uh, that's where we. That's what we think about. Okay, and Derek, that's this with the broad picture stuff and and looking yep. to, to the future on a, an operational level, day to day. What are some of the the challenges and the things that that you're dealing with? Well, at the moment, the, the, the challenges are trying to get in as many low load services, container services as we can. We would like. Um, the current our current partners, the FDS and Samskip, arrive in Dublin, come to Waterford, and then go back onto Cork. We would like at some stage to get a, a line going straight from Waterford to the continent, which is something we've done back in the early two thousands, fairly successfully. So, as the economy is starting to come back and confidence is starting to grow in the operations we can do and what we what we can and cannot do in Waterford, that we, we'd hope to attract maybe another line that that can do something like that. So. That's that's our next challenge after bedding in Maersk and BG. Mm. Explain as well just the difference between low low and roll on roll off because it, that's something that we don't do in Waterford. It's just the low low, isn't that right? Yeah, we just do low low in Waterford. What low low is? It's lift on lift off. It's basically lifting the container off off it, whether it is, uh, it's a truck or a train, putting it. You can put it directly on the ship or you can put it into the compound till the ship arrives. And uh, the Roro, it's a, it's a little bit slower than Roro. Roro is obviously your roll-on, roll-off, where the, either the truck or the trailer unit is put on the ship and pulled off on the other side again. So two different concepts. One, uh, Roro is a bit faster. That's when you hear about Brexit, with Roro and uh, land bridge and stuff like that. But um, the short sea and feeder services are normally low, low. So lift on, lift off. And it's quite a simple concept. Uh, a bit slower, but uh, probably more economic or environmentally friendly. OK. And is that, are you happy enough with that? Or is it something that you'd like to develop the Roro as well, maybe into the future? Uh, at this moment of time, we don't see Waterford as being an option for, for Roro, but the way the river is and the type of vessels that are now operating in the Roro sector. Uh, we would see Ross Lair is a partner of ours and that uh, they're, they're subsidised by the state or they're operated by the state, as are we. So why why have two assets mm. doing not functioning yeah. completely? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and would you see greater maybe integration or cooperation then in the future between yourselves and Ross Lair, particularly as the, ro- the road improves? Yeah, well, we, co- we're st- we in the last two years um, with Frank and their chief executive have started to cooperate quite a lot on, on things like marketing the southeast and things like that. So there's a small bit of a relationship there and it, it may grow over the years. Who knows what will happen, you know? They're yeah. important to us in lots of ways. I mean, yeah. certainly we're, 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 certainly we're working on trying to get the trains back in, the freight trains back yeah. in Watford. And those are the, the men that are really important to us in that. Mm. And don't forget, Julie, that, that Waterford is not, I mean, the low, low, it's great to see a good story there. But we've had a good story for a number of years now on the, on the bulk side of our business. So Waterford is a, is a bulk port and a low, low port. Uh, Ross Lair is a few miles over the road, owned by the same government, owned by the same taxpayer, doing a very good job on Roro. They've had a couple of 
things that changed, I suppose, in, in recently in, 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 in the version of traffic Dublin, but doing a good job on Roro and passengers. Uh, so we see that we see both ports as being partners in the southeast and complementary rather than rather than in opposition or, or rather than competing. Uh, and that's a mindset that I think is important, and we we, we always try to say that. Uh, I think it's it's important to understand that, and uh, that's certainly where we come f- where we come from on it. Now, Waterford and Rosslare as well, of course, are, are tier two ports. Dublin and Cork would be tier one. Does that make much of a difference when it comes to getting government investment? Are you satisfied with the amount of support that you get? It's uh, the answer to that, of course, Julie, is, is no. No, uh, no. Who's ever uh, satisfied? And it's, and it, and it's yeah. even worse than that because you mentioned government when it, when, it, when you when you when you just peel back the first layer of that. None of the ports, uh, no matter what tier you are, will actually get any direct government aid. So, so state aid is just a, is a no-no for us. If we want help, we need to go to the SEF funding, the big transport budgets in Europe. Uh, it's probably easier to get if you're a tier one port to get directly get direct funding out of Europe. But even direct grant funding is very scarce. What happens? You get what they call these blended things. Basically, you end up getting good loans from the EIB, but it's still all pay, repayable money. Whereas I have to admit, with these big capital capital budgets and big capital plans that we've got to put play, put in place in ports, but relatively low earning businesses. Uh, grant aid can be very, very important. So tier one makes it a bit easier to get the grant and the supports. Tier two, we have to work a wee bit harder. Uh, and, uh, and for instance, we're, we're, we're heading off next next Friday to go over and see see the motorways of the sea guys, which is a branch of the European funding. Uh, ourselves and Ross Air will probably travel together. Uh, and we will be looking uh, with other stakeholders to see if we can put together whatever sort of, uh, I suppose, joined up thinking we need to do to secure funding for all of us. So it's not impossible, just a little bit more difficult, a bit more tricky. More tricky. Yeah. And talk to me then as well about cruise ships, because when we've seen Dublin Port are trying to restrict now. This was, they're, they're so busy, they don't want the cruise ships. In, in Waterford, we've seen a relatively steady level throughout the last few years. Is that, is that important or is it? It's important. Yeah. Uh, and we've, we've, we work away at a certain level. Uh, we have to put the hand of first. Dublin took some ferocious hits there about that, but we have to. Under, we, have, we kind of understand that mm. you're in the business to facilitate trade, and sometimes you got to make choices. You can't be all things to all people. We would. We we bring cruise ships uh, to the southeast. Um, it's very. It's important for in the in the wider economy again and what we do. So it supports a lot of hospitality business, a lot of tourism related business in the southeast. We think we could do more. Uh, the offering we have for the very big ships, we bring them to more and mm. we, tender the, we tender the passengers in. For middle-sized ships, we'll take them to Bellevue. But even there, it's becoming conflicted insofar as if we have three bulk ships and a cruise ship. They're not compatible, Julia. So you're trying to trying to sort out ways to do that. And some of the smaller ships we still like and we in the long term, we'd hope to bring them up into the city. Yeah. Uh, we think there's a facility there at the Great Island maybe we could make more use of. Uh, so I think it's a game about playing to our strengths, about looking what we have, about maximising the facilities we have and, and trying to find the niches that suit us best. Uh, but again, we can't be all things to all people. Great. Um, now, is there something else that we should mention or cover? I think of oh, on would, a bit more. Would Not necessarily. More? I think I think one of the things, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a, we are looking for s- s- staff ourselves, which is one of the good news stories about oh, the extra great. services. Yes, so well, definitely. I'll ask you that. Then. So I think they can yeah. ask Derek about Yeah. You about are advertising. I saw that yes. actually. Funny guy. I alerted Sinead to that when you came in yes. last week. Yes, said to ask that's you right. about that. Um, so finally then, Derek, as this service now expands, it's July, is it? That we'll see the first... Yeah, first week in July. We hope the first week in July and uh, it'll all start then. Uh, that's the plan at the moment. So everything going, IT systems for the shippers and stuff like that. They've, their SAP systems have to fit in with the shipping lines. So that's been a small blocker but we're, we're just over that so we have, hope to get going around the 6th of July Okay and will that require then more staff are you recruiting at the moment? Yes we're looking at recruiting staff so it's, uh, it's on our website uh, we're looking for some crane drivers and uh, some terminal operations staff uh, So, and we're, we're also succession planning because our workforce is starting to age so we're, we're looking to do some succession planning as well. So that'll, over the next number of months, we'll probably form a panel and start to bring in guys and train them. And what about employment numbers? Have they fluctuated a lot over the years? I mean, yeah. I suppose when Bell Lions went in 97, was it? The, the, 97, yeah. There would have been a big yeah. scale back. Would you say yeah, you're kind of up to where you were? Well, from that Bell Lions point? was a, 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 an entity in itself. Like, you know, that would have implied almost 50 people, whereas the port would have had lower numbers uh, mm. So after the bell lines, uh, I suppose 
numbers were quite good until the, the economic crash in 2008. So I would say we kind of halved our workforce after 2000 and between 2008 and 2011. But that's slowly coming back. And I'd say we've employed maybe a dozen people in the last two years. And those numbers are growing all the time. So And it must be remembered for every one we're, we're employing, I'd say we're probably indirectly maybe four to six more. So that's kind of where, where, where it builds. We're not huge employers. What we what we do bring scalability into it when when, when we employ a person does does indirect sub, uh, jobs there as well you know yeah well, great yeah. well it's great to see such positivity coming from the port and and such growth um, and well. We'll continue to <laughs> we'll continue to I'm touching monitor wood here. you. I'm touching it's, today, yeah. 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 Only way um, the economy performs. That's right. We, we follow the economy, Julian. Really, you know, so we would be careful about not being yeah, too yeah. carried yeah, away with that. Too, no. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, look. Well, look. It was great to hear all about the positivity that's coming from the port and 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 the growth. And we wish you well with all of us. And uh, Derek Madigan and Frank Rona, thanks so much Thank for you. taking the time coming into me today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. What time have we now? Oh, about five minutes to put the bulletin together.